got a cop in. Two boy, if you fuck with me, the police are gonna have to come and get me. When the record company met us, I think they was looking at like we've got something we can sell here without even having to adjust anything or change it. Let them wear their baggy clothes, let them walk around with their attitude. We didn't really want to worry about anything, let alone image. I don't think you could have ever manipulated them to wear anything other than what they wanted to wear. All right, all right, everything's gonna be all right. Like latter-day artful Dodgers, they came straight out of East London. But the inspiration for their first hit came from more distant shores. Wonder, wonder. It was written about the Gulf War the first time round, so there was actually you know, a nice bit of message in there and stuff. I didn't really feel a part of the you know, to stop the war, stop the violence, and I was just about, in them days, you know, I want to do R&B, do you know what I mean? I've always been aware that some people don't listen to lyrics at all, you know, but I've never been one, I've always listened to the lyrics, so I kind of put something of interest that makes sense, not like, you know, that I love you and you love me, my teeth are clean and the sky is blue. <laughs> And all I did with E17 was offer a, a contenders to take that. Tom said, this is your competition. We was like, <laughs> competition? We don't have competition. This is your competition. And he played this video of these guys in leather thongs, and it was them. Mm -hmm. And we was like, yeah, right, all right. Well, d you know, obviously, there is no competition. Take that went to bed with coat hangers in their mouths to wake up with smiles the next morning. And E17 w went to bed with any young lady that was available. They were the mongrels of the boy band world. But what they had to overtake that was an edge. They were geezers, you know what I mean? They were a bit woo, woo. We were the originals with no O. Wanted to be keep moving, never stopping. Though sometimes I feel like dropping. Gotta keep on and be strong, avoid the wrong. Cause in this Tony may have fancied himself as LL Cool J, but for their Christmas number one, he took his cue from Liberace. <laughs> I always prefer writing the ballads, and they're easy to write. They're slow, there's hardly any words in it, the melodies are drawn out, and before you know it, you're at the end of three and a half minutes. I touch your face while you are sleeping And hold your hand, don't understand what's going on I remember coming out of my nan's house and walking down the road on my own, and I was sort of like, it was all parked cars and that, and I'd sort of just clocked myself in a, in, a, in a reflection and I'm thinking, like, you're number one in the charts, mate. Do you know what I mean? I was all right. I got, I got called the writer. Well, that's cool. You know, I worked. And Brian got called the lead vocalist. Well, that's cool. He was. But they got called the two at the back, which is not such an easy or easy ride. People built up this image of, oh, they're the people in the back, they don't do nothing. Terry the dancer. Oh. Johnny on the, uh... Hey. But then no-one said that about Boyzone, you know? Well, I will know that Ronan can sing. Ronan can bust a note or two. But, like, you know, look, what about the other ones in the background? No-one ever says, what does he do? What does he do? Brian's high profile got even higher. First, thanks to a stormy relationship with a celebrity girlfriend, then an ill-judged admission about ecstasy use. It is a bad thing, you know what I mean? I don't advise doing it, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't a clever thing to say, but I was lured into this situation, yeah? The guy said to me, so, well, I said, what do you want to know, mate? And he said, well, how many have you ever done in a night? Now, I've answered this question before so many times, so I really didn't think it mattered, and, and Tony was saying stuff, so I thought, well, it, it must be OK. 
that when you don't know how to cope with something because you've got no experience of it, you don't know what's happening, so you, you say something and it like, it goes bang, 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 and you're thinking, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> I said to uh, Tony Mortimer and the rest of the crew, if he continues to be in the band, I no longer want to manage you. I will leave. You have a very clear choice. It's either him or me. And I really didn't care. It wasn't some sort of idle threat. But Tom didn't leave, Brian was forgiven, and he returned to the fold. But it wasn't long before Tony was starting to feel the strain. I personally couldn't handle it no more, the pressure of it. I was weighing nine stone, I'm six foot, six foot one, you know, I was, I was very ill, so I thought, I've, something's got to change here and I've got to look out for me. Tony's still recording material, while Brian is relaunching himself as a solo artist. Graduates both from the boy band of Hard Knocks. One minute you're a plumber, you're in a hole up to here with water, trying to shovel it out. Next minute you're on stage, you've got a little bit of money, everyone knows who you are, and all girls want you. And it, and it was just like, it was brilliant. There's no boy band ever, ever, ever partied like we did. We could party our socks off just the four of us in a room. <laughs> <laughs>